and welcome to National Revolutions, which was the mod uh, for Napoleon Total War that won the straw poll. So this is what we're going to play. I've already gone ahead and uh, played a little bit of it just to test it out. And I'm not entirely sure, maybe there's more versions of this. But uh, for the version I have, um, you can play as these four nations. And I know that someone, or there were a few people that said I should play as Ireland, but Ireland is not actually part of this. So I'm not entirely sure if there's multiple... I, I imagine there's multiple uh, versions of this, maybe. Or if there's... Uh, maybe it was an uh, earlier version of this that had Ireland. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so I'm thinking that... Uh, we're going to possibly do uh, a few of these but because uh, they might um, um, it, mi it might go rather quickly to achieve the goals of this because it's basically um, taking control over the, the, the territories sort of if you're as as we're looking at now if we are um, the Italians or we're doing the Italians we're basically gonna conquer all of Italy and create the Italian nation and with the Greeks we have something similar but it's sort of like a greater Greek nation where we also include a lot of the Balkans and apparently Bavaria uh, northern Italy and a few others so rather rather large Greek um, state um, anyways I think we'll actually start off with the Italians because they are the one that has like a clear cut. Because you start off like at the boot or the heel of Italy. And then you're supposed to capture all of Italy and create the Italian kingdom. So I think we'll start with that. And depending on how many uh, episodes this goes on for. We, we can go ahead and extend it to then include uh, maybe one of the other nations as well. Like the Greeks. Or the, um, the, is it Principality? It looks like it says Principality uh, of Valachia. And then we have the Principality of uh, Moldavia. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, unite the Italian nation. Right, and so here we are, and this is our current, uh, what we control right now, but we're supposed to take, I believe we're actually, we start off as a client state, to, so we're a client state of the Kingdom of Sicily, so at some point I imagine we'll have to uh, rebel against them and destroy them as well, and then we're going to have to take uh, Rome, and uh, also Sardinia Piedmont um, and a few other Corsica from France a lot of places here from the uh, the Austro-Hungarians you can actually see what I'm supposed to take I'm supposed to take uh, Balkans as well which is currently home to uh, uh, the uh, the Serbian nation or I'm, I'm not entirely sure maybe it's just a rebel nation I'm not entirely sure if it's actually part of its own. But we can see what I need to take here. I don't actually need to take um, the sort of the most western part of Italy here, which I think is a bit strange, but I think we're going to have to take take all of this, maybe even it, as, as much as possible of what today is Italy. And uh, this campaign holds actually some special um, quests in them, so you will get special quests or objectives throughout this and I kind of memorized the ones you get in the start anyways so we're gonna start off by building a gunsmith because that's one of the quests then we also need barracks because we need more troops and then we need troops as well and uh, we're not gonna build anything here just yet we're gonna wait until next turn then we're gonna be a dockyard because that's another objective and before I forget, we need to get a road and also we need to go into government and the ministers. So the treasury minister is actually a tactician, which means he is better at army. And then instead of justice, we're going to have head of state, which gives us prestige and diplomatic 
relation and also turn to town wealth in region which is better we don't really need a uh, chief justice right now maybe I could have set this guy because he has um, basically two plus two management um, so we could set him maybe as tax minister to enable that but I think uh, we're gonna do with the head minister to start off with and there's probably gonna be quite a few turns where we just end turn here in the beginning but um, we'll see who we were able to draw into battle with possibly the uh, papal states or if we uh, go ahead and liberate ourselves from the kingdom of Sicily so anyways let's go ahead and start by ending turns and yeah right and so here we are on the second turn apparently we had an alliance with Great Britain which now is broken and here we go, mission issued, weapons of the revolution, construct a gunsmith. The royalist army is supplied with the latest weapon and equipment, while our men are using old muskets and even farmer equipments. In order to start our liberation movement, we must first arm the people, build a gunsmith so we can produce our own weaponry, and, ha and not have to rely on captured or smuggled weapons. We have a turn limit of 10, which I think will be all. Uh, of that and we get 10,000 uh, gold for that and a unit of line infantry and I've already started building a gunsmith so we're three turns away from getting that and the next mission is going to be build a dockyard and that's going to pop up just in time so we're able to do that and now we've got 2,000 gold over and we don't we can't um, research any technology because we don't have a um, what's it called a university of our own so what we need to do is we need to buy from the only people in Europe who likes us which is Holland or the Netherlands um, and we're gonna see what they have that might be useful so this one national debt is pretty useful uh, the other two inquire not they're not that good so I think national debt and we're gonna see what we need what we need to pay the Dutch to get that 1500 maybe okay so 1910 for national debt yes we'll agree to that and so now I've got a bit of technology and gives me a little bit of extra gold because it it gave us um, let's see it gave us upkeep costs so our armies 5% there and then plus to wealth in all t in all regions which will be useful because right now apparently we're going minus two in growth but that will increase as uh, we've got trade roads coming in and enlightenment there we go those five extra points so we'll actually be uh, increasing in growth uh, of this uh, region anyways let's go ahead and end the turn once more right and there we are for turn three we have recruited three units in Naples we're gonna uh, recruit two more and then one Hussar unit and that's about it I don't think I have anything really to do there's no trade routes I can set up what we're going to do is once the uh, dockyard is actually built we're going to switch that over tra to a trade um, port because we can get trade ships then to uh, the spice commodity which is right here which is uh, the one closest to us that, that we'll get the most money from uh, ivory is of course uh, the best one and we're going to need that if we're going to we need a lot of money to uh, to uh, be able to uh, get the war rolling and uh, declare war and so forth but anyways let's go ahead and end turn once more okay so here we are for what I believe is turn four is it yes um, so nothing really happened but we have money now so I think what we're going to do is we're going to buy another technology this time we're gonna buy conscription now it gives minus two happiness for the lower classes but it will increase the recruitment slot in our home region but plus one which means that I will be able um, to get uh, more troops out more quickly so we're gonna see if probably they're gonna do a similar amount of money for this one So 1900 
let's see and they agreed to it so maybe because we were we have increased uh, our relationship with them so I could probably have set it to maybe 1500 um, to save some money there but now we've got an extra slot um, right here so we can recruit more troops I don't have enough money though so if I if I had reduced it a bit just by a hundred I could have actually started recruiting another Hussar unit which probably would have helped us but anyways let's go ahead and end turn again and go on to turn number five right so there we have it turn number five and we've got a new mission issued which is naval power the dockyard so the lack of a navy has always proven to be the downfall of revolution and empires alike most recently the royal navy prevented king murat of naples to reunite the two sicilies under a single crown and ensure that sicily remained as a bourbon bastion throughout the napoleonic wars we must not allow this to happen again. Build a dockyard and start building a powerful navy to, to protect the revolution. Turn 5 and get 10,000. So I, I didn't start... If I started that in the first... If I started building the dockyard in the first turn... I, I would have built it in the same turn that I got the quest. So I wouldn't have been able to complete the quest without tearing the place down and building it again. So that's why you need to wait one turn in the beginning. Um, and now we've got 10,000 gold, or 12,000, so we've got a lot of money to spend on a lot of troops. So we're going to get more troops there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get general for our army. Uh, they're all three stars, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then the stuff we built, we built the gunsmith and we built the roads. So we can build, uh, upgrade them the, to a musket manufactory and it increase one more training unit. So we can train five at a time in the home region, which is good. And uh, we'll wait one more turn and then we get another 10,000 for this. And uh, we'll be able to upgrade that. We're going to upgrade. Since I got so much money, we're just going to go ahead and upgrade everything. And we got more money. So let's see if the Dutch. Or the, uh, yeah, the Dutch, if they've got anything else. Uh, classic economics and carronade is not really anything I want. Let's see, is there anyone else that's kind of happy with this? Two Sicilies is kind of happy with us, or they are. But, yeah, we can just give them technologies. We actually out we outsmart our home region. So everyone that actually likes us, seemingly doesn't have any good technologies to give us and as you can see the rest of Europe especially Spain and France really dislikes us uh, Prussia not so much they have fire in advance but nothing that I really want to spend any money on right now possibly what I could do is I can actually trade the technology so national debt for fire in advance just to get some oh it they agreed and hopefully that deal help improve the relationship in between our two countries and uh, classical economics it gives another minus happiness and I don't know if we want to stack up any more unhappiness to our home region um, entertainment culture so we've got I don't know it isn't that bad yet so it's not like my home region is about to rebel or anything so I guess we can go ahead and trade that from Sweden and we'll get the classical economics if they agree with that. Um, yes, they agreed to it. Let's see, is there anyone else? United Kingdom doesn't really like us. And uh, we don't like any of their technologies. France really doesn't like us. They don't have anything that we want. Russia, neither. Interestingly enough here, um, we have a lot of technologies that no one else seemed to have gone so compared to a lot of these larger nation I'm actually quite technologically advanced and if we look at the prestige meter I'm not there yet um, hopefully I will turn up there pretty soon anyways let's go ahead and end the turn once more and go on to turn six is it okay so in the middle of the turns here we have the Papal States with the Pope Pius the uh, seventh gonna head and declare war on us and we're gonna bring on our ally or our uh, or a mother nation or whatever you want to call it 
So there's two against one. He's got quite a massive army though. So trade agreement with the Papal State was broken. We have constructed some stuff which is good. Gonna go ahead and switch this to trade port at this point. And here's our army as of now. We've got an extra slot there so we're gonna get another soldier out. Hopefully the uh, Papal army will wait a bit for before they attack us because right now I don't have a lot of troops here. And hopefully two Sicilies will start marching at so some soldiers up to help us in uh, in this war. Um, let's see if there's any technologies. I don't think there is. Uh, one other thing we need to start the building is a small star fort as well to protect our home region because that's going to be since we're such a small nation, we need something to protect the capital. Anyways. Let's go ahead and click end turn once more and see if the Papal States attacks. Right, so next turn and we were able to recruit those extra troops we'll, we'll, which will do plenty enough for us because now we've got quite a large army, 12 units, um, including the general, which is going to be plenty enough to hold off the Papal States. Um, our allies uh, haven't come yet to our aid. The only thing that's uh, that I know that the Papal States do have that sort of is uh, compared to us is the troops are a lot better to start off with, with uh, a few po points extra in accuracy compared to us. And also they start, even though they can't recruit cannons in Rome, they actually have two cannons, so that we'll have to watch out for that. Let's see, is there any technology? No. Nothing new there. Let's go ahead and then turn then. And unless the uh, Papal States decide to attack us, it might be a high time um, after two turns here when these troops are ready to attack them. So let's go ahead and end turn once more. And here we are for the next turn and we just got a mission issued and that is to build a small star fort. Uh, our revolutionary army is still in its infancy and a little experience in battle against more professional armies. That is why we need to construct a system of forts where armies can fall back to and regroup and also where they can better withstand the forces of our enemy should they invade our homelands. 10 turns and we get 10,000 for that. And we're already starting to build that, so that soon be done there. And our army, we're one more turn away. And then we've got an army that could possibly actually attack uh, the, uh, the Papal States. And we can take Rome, increasing our empire uh, twofold. Because they have quite a lot. And we'll also get a university. Uh, we'll actually get... No, that's actually part of the enemy's territory. So we'll get one university, we'll get gold, we'll get more vi wine. And we'll be able to pretty soon start to produce some trade ships as well. Anyways, once more, end turn. Right, and we're back. We've got the uh, papal army has turned up over here. Which is nowhere close to where they needs to be. So the, what's this? So one of the ministers goes um, manage to justice administration. Hopefully it is the guy that we actually got in place for justice administration. Um, justice of peace. Yes, management for justice. So that's good. So we've got one that's five stars and then two four stars. That's good. Um, one more turn until that's done. The windyard was upgraded. And I think we have an army big enough to actually go ahead and attack the Papal States. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the Cesar up to this hill overlooking Rome. And he's going to go ahead and scout to How see what they've you? got. So we've got a general here with unknown amount of troops. And then we've got more troops here. So it's quite a sizable army. But I think we want to strike before the enemy strikes us. So I think, well, first of all, we need to be prepared for the worst. So I'm going to re <laughs> recruit some extra troops just in case. The fort is about two turns away. 
and I don't think the enemy will be able to attack after uh, this battle so we're gonna march up the main army Avanti Savoia and we're gonna send in the Hussar to the army and we're gonna m attack him across the bridge and attack the Papal States they will know what happens to those that declare war on us so we're outnumbered according to this and as you can see the Papal State troops have about um, most of them have 3 to 2 chevrons which means they have 46 to 44 accuracy while we have 40 so they are uh, better there uh, the hussars are about equal the upside to our hussars is they actually have guns so they can fire and in true in number of troops we actually outnumber the enemy and if we strike fast we can crush the smaller army with the proper general before uh, the main army comes to reinforce so without further ado let's claim Rome into uh, the revolution and here we are on the field of battle we've got the outskirts of Rome ahead of us and uh, we've got the army drawn out in front of us there's only two units plus the general right now so we'll be able to march in and take up a lot of positions here within houses and stuff obviously um, the best thing is if my cavalry is able to kill off the enemy cannons uh, because otherwise the houses will become death traps but without further ado let's go ahead and quickly advance towards the enemy and destroy them before most of their reinforcements have turned in on the field so we can see the enemy's reinforcements is turning out up up here and we've got two units of dragoons coming in um, which I believe what was the cavalry units they had I thought they were actually hussars but seeing as they are dragoons they're probably a bit uh, tougher in melee than my hussars so that's gonna be a problem anyways the uh, enemy is racing to meet us without any concern the fact that uh, there's an army of 2,000 men marching towards them and they don't even have close to that so we're gonna get four units here and we're gonna get quickly up to the edge of the forest and the rest of the units gonna slowly march into place and we're gonna start the battle that way we're gonna get these two units to plug the gap in between the line and this house and then these units will then flank onto the side of these guys and the battle is about to start ish oh the enemy advances into range of us they have a slight advantage in accuracy against us but we have superior numbers and also we uh, we have the cover of the forest while they are out in the open we've got cavalry unit coming forwards we got actually two so what I'm gonna do let's see if we can get these two units to take these houses and then we can move this unit in between and form into square the general seems to be fine right now so we need to throw in more men into the flank here and we're gonna get our cavalry to continue their advance hopefully be able to catch those artillery pieces of the enemy uh, out in the open so the enemy is charging forth or the cavalry is form square and prepare to to uh, let's see these guys hopefully no they're not gonna be able to get into the house oh they are actually they were just in time to get into the house and the dragoons are now uh, stuck fighting our squares and uh, the two formidable uh, houses that I've taken so the enemy is falling apart and on this side now we've pushed in so many men on all the flanks 
that the the enemy line infantry that was out here is really feeling the pressure now with the amount of firepower we're able to put down and the enemy general was forced away as well uh, we've got one guess this is one of the ah, this is a hussar unit which seems like it wants to retreat same with the cannons which have deployed just at the edge here and it doesn't look as though the enemy intends to come to us we're gonna have to come to them so it's time to start marching through the town we're gonna drop the square and march towards there before too many enemies turn up I wanna see if I can get the hussars there quickly so we're gonna set up here we're gonna run towards them fire and then retreat and hopefully we can avoid the line infantry and stuff but right now it doesn't look like that's gonna be a we're gonna be able to do that and at this point I don't want to run my troops because if I start running the troops they'll be tired before they get there they'll have to run through the entire town um, to actually get to where the enemy is and that will that will be too much um, especially since the enemy is actually better equipped than us so let's see where can we set up I kinda need some line infantry up here to support the cavalry because the cavalry won't stand on their own since they're just hussars and they'll have a hard time attacking even three units will have a hard time taking down a full size unit like this let's see if he comes what we'll do we'll back away a bit and then we can ride up as he comes closer here uh, stay behind the wall fire hopefully it rather quickly I know his are quite slow at firing from horseback um, and then the line infantry can come in and sort of take take the front of it so let's hurry up here while he's in among the houses hopefully we'll be able to distract him for a bit and this one's confident why don't you sort of get stuff going by quickly moving up here so they've realized the hussars are coming in and I think they're forming up to uh, return fire okay so we fired a bit on them there we go now we need to retreat before we lose too many men so we lost 10 horsemen while the enemy lost 10 infantrymen so not really a good trade but we put them off guard and the line infantry unit is now here to take up the fight against the papal state troops we're gonna get up to the wall because it's gonna gonna give us a little bit of cover you know what we're gonna stay on the wall because only the first line will fire so we're gonna stay them get them at the wall and then gonna get their heads down and then from there they're gonna be able to fire from a good defensive position against the papal state troops we'll have the hussars here ready to ride up again fire at the enemy and now we got more line infantry coming in um, to help out here so they're actually turning the line for some reason I guess they're expecting the main the main body of uh, infantry from our side coming up and uh, this unit definitely needs some help because now this one's closing in very fast so we're gonna get this one to hurry up here and this one's gonna stay in kind of column and kind of run to this side okay so this one's about to get out flanked we're gonna get the hussars up they're gonna fire and then they're gonna have to charge in so I'm gonna get them close because the accuracy of the hussars is not that great also I kind of want to make sure that the hussars don't shoot each other they have a tendency to do that so let's see where are they gonna face they're actually gonna face the unit so they got they're gonna fire into the flank of our unit there and we don't want to let them do that too much but at the same time I want the hussars to get full all their fire at the enemy before they charge 
going to tell them to hold fire as to not shoot each other. And the Hussars were able to entirely destroy the unit. Now they're going to retreat back. This unit is in a bad spot. It's taking heavy fire. It's going to have to fall back and it's going to be replaced by this unit. What they can do is actually stay here. And these two units are now coming under fire. And they need to uh, hurry into line to uh, open fire on the enemy. So I think those R's are ready for another charge here. They can get this unit. So quickly right up to here and then they can fire from here. So this wall did a lot. So we saw this unit has suffered 20 casualties while the unit that was out here in the open uh, suffered a lot more casualties um, than the one behind the wall. So it looks like we're going to be able to shoot this unit down. So I'm not going to need to charge it. It's about to break anytime soon now. Down to 50 men and there they go. This one's marching straight into our fire. Possibly they could charge but we got the general to support behind. And we also have a flanking unit down there able to fire upon them. And looks like the AI is really stupid here. And uh, forming in quite the nice line for us and the broken. So we got another line coming down there. So we need to form line there and then we need to form a line along here. And then, shit, I've uh, kind of neglected the troops moving here. And so that unit got shot down. We're going to take, we're going to claim the town hall. And then we're going to set up a few units around town. I think the reason why these guys lost so much was the fact that we actually have the cannons there. So... It's time to um, make sure that we uh, we kill off those cannons with the cavalry. So most of the enemy line infantry is now on the field and not by the cannons, which means we can line up the cavalry here, ride up and shoot down the enemy. We also have a weak unit here, a militia unit, that we can ride down because they don't they can't form a square and they're not very good in close quarters against the cavalry units. So hopefully we're firing from the windows as well. So we get kind of a two-stage firing position on the enemy lines. And we got the enemy coming down there. So what we want to do is we're going to get you to come there. The smaller unit will come next to that. We get you to stand behind the wall. You don't need to sit behind the wall always. Um, it gives the cover just as well, but we're going to get this sort of half circle. So if the enemy wants to come and fight us down this road, um, we're going to be able to pour quite a bit of fire upon them. Okay, so these guys are back and uh, they've got quite a nice position here with a bit of walls protecting them. So you can stay there now. And looks like I got the main town under control. The enemy's attack is not going to be able to be successful here. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the cavalry now. And we're going to charge forth. We're going to fire at close range. And then charge in with our swords. And uh, after that, I'm pretty sure that once the cannons and the sort of supporting troops behind them, the troops attacking town will know that they're surrounded and it's time to give up. Looks like the cannon crew is kind of preparing to fire but they're not actually turning the guns in the right way. The enemy cavalry however is uh, turning to charge us. But I think we'll be able to fire beforehand. Okay, you are allowed to fire as well. I guess they're, wait they're waiting for one guy to turn up. I guess that will be just 
enough for them to uh, right charge them then can you actually go ahead and fire already there we go now charge in we might have shot some of our own men there and the enemy cavalry abandons the cannons and leaves them to be overrun by our cavalry back in the town the enemy militia is running away this unit is getting suffering from heavy fire from multiple units and the units that are trying to make it into town are also getting fired upon from multiple locations now when the cannons are gone we can spread out in the opens we can start attacking this one from multiple directions and what we can do is also get the cavalry to now come up behind the enemy okay so one of the units quite badly beaten they're gonna have to stay back but the other two is gonna form on the hill prepared to charge down towards the village against the two most uh, you, the two units that are, looks to be ready to surrender the militia is back so I'm gonna get these guys to move to take care of that and so we have this one this one looks ready to break oh shit the enemy is actually firing we're just gonna go straight for it normally you're not supposed to charge enemy units head on but seeing as though the line is so thin um, our cavalry will be able to just run them through and I think the enemy is feeling the pressure right now as most of their units are falling back and this unit as well is about to retreat don't want to shoot that many of my own cavalry so we're gonna retreat them and the only thing we have left now is to fight down this militia we can stand there and shoot all day or we can stick them with a pointy end so get your bayonets ready and charge the militia won't stand a chance against a regular army bayonet charge especially when there was disorganized like that And especially since they're outnumbered and they're coming back from having already retreated once. So there we go. We are victorious. The Battle of Rome is won. And there we have it. So we lost 700 men of our army. But the enemy suffered 1400. So double the casualties. And the highest killer among us was a line infantry they got 167 kills and that means that the town is ready for our attack unfortunately it seems as though quite a bit of cannons and stuff survived but we should be able to win this pretty easily we've got armed citizenry mobs though and stuff but I think uh, just prolonging this into a second battle is too much so what I'm going to do is I'm just out the resolving this and that worked just as I wanted we didn't lose a single unit and um, we did quite well there and Rome is now part of our kingdom this is probably going to get more international coverage and we could see some of the bigger nations like France Spain and Great Britain that really don't like us uh, they could possibly try to intervene and declare war on us. We're also going to look at um, getting rid of the Kingdom of Two Sicilies as well. Because we are in fact a client state of theirs. So that's um, probably what we're going to do next turn. Rather than actually go against the um, Austro-Hungarians or the Austrian Kingdom right here. Well, they, I shouldn't say the Austrian Hungarians because Hungary is its own region in this mod So it's just the Austrians So going against the Austrians doesn't look like that's gonna be a thing for us 
what we gained though was a university so I will be able to start uh, doing my own research we'll probably still because we're probably gonna get quite a bit of money so we're probably still going to um, go ahead and buy some technologies and stuff but it looks like we're now turning our directions south and looking at Palermo Sicily for our next conquest but this was the first episode of Revolutions and I hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!